Hello everybody, welcome back to the beautiful Epic Flight Academy in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. And today we want to talk about instrument approach procedures in terms of the commonalities between all instrument approaches. To do that, we want to look at the segments of an instrument approach. Now, there are five segments to an instrument approach, but it's important to remember not all approaches have all five segments. That right, that's right, folks. We are back in the instrument rating course. I'm your host, Mike Thompson. And remember, to be successful, there are three key requirements. Number one, you are studying this course in EPIC's online course. And number two, watching these videos with me, your host. Boy, are we glad you're here. Hit that subscribe button. And number three, review all of this content with your flight instructor. So take a look here at our first slide. What are those five segments of an instrument approach? You can see them listed here. The initial approach segment, the intermediate segment, the final approach segment, then we have the missed approach segment and feeder routes. Now remember, not all approaches have all five segments. Let's break this down and take a look at these different segments. If you take a look at our diagram here, we are depicting the initial approach segment in green. This is the official start of the approach. It begins at an IAF or an initial approach fix and it ends at the intermediate fix or IF. Now, it may end at a final approach fix if the intermediate fix is not used. The initial segment is designed to align the aircraft toward the airport and ideally to line it up with the final approach course. This segment is where you'll commonly find what is called a procedure turn if a procedure turn is required. Now, after the initial approach segment, you can see on the next slide here, the intermediate segment is depicted here in orange. This segment is designed to provide some spacing between the initial approach fix and the final approach fix. Now, again, this segment is not always published, but when it is, it allows a pilot to get fully configured for landing, align with the final approach course, and descend down to an altitude at which to begin the final descent to the runway. The third segment of the approach is that descent to the runway. We call this the final approach segment. And on our slide, you see it here depicted in purple. The final approach segment will begin at the final approach fix, and it will end at the missed approach point. This segment involves a descent from the final approach fix to minimum altitudes specified for that approach procedure. If the runway is in sight and the conditions of 91-175 are met, a pilot may descend past the minimum altitude and land. A pilot should be fully configured to land at the final approach fix and, estab and establish a stabilized descent to the minimum altitude. Now, depending upon the type of approach, that minimum altitude could either be an MDA or a DA. In other words, it could be a minimum descent altitude for a non-precision approach or a decision altitude for a precision approach or an approach with vertical guidance. If the approach is unstabilized or the pilot reaches the missed approach point without 
the requirements of 91175 in place, then the pilot is required to execute a missed approach. And that brings us to the next slide. This is the fourth segment of an instrument approach. We call it the missed approach segment. It begins at the missed approach point and it continues to the holding point. The missed approach segment on approach plates is depicted with dashed lines that lead to a hold. Now, notice here, we're depicting it in red, and that dash line leads from the MAP, missed approach point, to the HP, the holding point. A pilot is required to advise ATC on a missed approach. The fifth segment of an approach procedure is called feeder routes. Now again, remember, not all approaches have all five segments. Feeder routes are designed to take you from some part of the in-route structure or a star to the published start of the IAP, the Instrument Approach Procedure. These routes will take you from a fix or nav aid to the low and root chart to an initial approach fix. Feeder routes can be uh, denoted by a thin black line and are associated with an altitude course and a distance. So if you take a look at our example here, we've circled it in red, a thin black line, and you see an altitude course and a distance. These feeder routes are not published on every approach. Now that we've talked about the five segments of an approach, let's take a moment and talk about the sections of an FAA approach plate. If you take a look at our diagram here, we have color-coded an FAA approach plate. And I want you to be aware of and then discuss in detail with your flight instructor these six parts of an approach plate. Number one, in gray, margin information. Number two, and you can see this in a light green across the top, this is what we call the briefing strip and remarks. Number three, in yellow, I want you to be aware of a overhead or bird's eye or often called plan view of the approach. The plan view is critical in helping us with our situational awareness. Fourthly, I want you to take a look at the profile view. This is shown here in pink. The profile view is like looking at the approach from the side. And then fifth, on the bottom of the chart, you can see that in light blue, this is the landing minimums section, which we'll talk about in more detail in one moment. Finally, in the lower right-hand corner of the plate, you see an airport sketch. On our sample, we've shown that here in light purple. Now, what about these approach minimums? Let's take a look at those in a little more detail. On the approach plate, remember in our example, we showed them in light blue. Now here's a close-up. Notice across the top, we have categories A, B, C, and D. Down the left-hand column, we have assigned runways and or circling. In this case, we see S, ILS 27 and SLOC 27 and circling. Now, discuss this with your flight instructor. What this means is if we were going to do the straight in ILS to runway 27, we would look at that row for our decision altitude and required visibility. If, for example, 
we had no glide slope and we were going to do the straight in localizer to 27, we would look at the second row and there we would see a slightly higher, uh, well in this case not a decision altitude, an MDA, a minimum descent altitude, and our required visibility. And then in the bottom row, higher still, our circling MDA and visibility. Now, notice if, for example, I was operating my aircraft in category A, and I, I knew that I was going to do the straight in ILS 27, I can see my decision altitude would be 1,352 feet with a runway visual range minimum visibility of 2,400 feet. Now, what if I was going to fly in an aircraft in category B or C or D? Well, guess what? Same. What if I was doing the straight in localizer 27? Those requirements are the same for categories A, B, and C, but if I was in category D, they change. Notice in the circling row, if I was circling the airport in category A, my minimum descent altitude 1,540. Notice if I was in category B, 1,640, and you can see how it goes up as I go to category D. So these are the required approach minimums on an FAA chart. And now we might be wondering, well, Mike, we're talking about categories A, B, C, and D. What exactly are those? Well, I'm glad you asked because those are approach aircraft categories based on a speed of VREF if specified, or if VREF is not specified, it is 1.3 VSO at the maximum certified landing weight. So what this means is if I'm approaching the airport at 85 knots, I'm going to use category A minimums. If I know that my VREF or approach speed were, oh, maybe 115 knots, well, I wouldn't be using category A. And if I look at the table, I wouldn't be using category C. At 115 knots, what category would I use? And if you said category B, you nailed it. So when we are approaching the airport, we have to determine which approach category we are going to be in. Now, these are going to be based on the aircraft's VREF, or if that is not specified, 1.3 VSO. An aircraft may never use minima from a lower category. However, it may use minima from a higher category when necessary to operate at higher approach speeds. Well, folks, that just about wraps it up for the segments of an approach and an overview of the FAA's instrument approach plate. Come back and join us next time.